everyone, it's Pissed Out Games with Duckcom here, and today we're going to be reviewing Glozel Green's book, Is You Okay? We were lucky enough to be able to meet her and see her speak, mm -hmm. and she was really, really nice She and was awesome. She was awesome. Um, so I'm really glad that we got a copy of her book, mm -hmm. and it's actually like a really, really good book, and if you haven't read it already, you definitely should. Just starting off with that. You what? Starting off with, you should read the book, it's really good. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, it, it, too long, didn't watch, right? Get the book and read it. It's yes. really it's really funny and insightful, and she was awesome. And she's a great public speaker. Like, I was really kind of blown yeah. away by... She she gave, like, a really inspirational kind of speech. And, hi. Hi, my name is <laughs> Jill. <laughs> she did a little dance, and it was it was nutty. Like, it was everything you would expect and more out of Gozell to do a thing. And so she was yeah. really impressive. And then we got a couple of copies of the book mm -hmm. uh, in our swag bags, um, and uh, we both finished reading it. I don't know if you don't watch the channel much, um, then one of the things Preston and I like to do is we'll both read the same book and then we'll do like a combined kind of book review because I can talk about what I got out of it and what I saw from my perspective and she can talk about what she saw from her perspective and so a lot of authors really kind of dig that apparently. We've gotten some good feedback from it so we're yeah. going to do kind of the same thing here, right? Right. Yeah. But first, something's missing. That's better. If we're going to do a Glozell review, there needs to be a little bit of crazy in it, at least. <laughs> okay. And this is okay. I'm cool with this crazy because I can't see it or feel it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I have no idea. Yeah. All right. Yes. Do you like it? I don't. I haven't decided if I li if I like having lipstick on or not. You've, you've never really worn lipstick. Yeah. Either. No, I haven't. I haven't either. So it's the first for both of us. <laughs> I might have worn it when I was like four. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't remember, I don't remember wearing it when you were four. Okay, cool. Let's talk about the book. Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was a really, really good book. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's a very um, light read. Like, it's not very hard to read. Um, Parts of it are kind of hard to read. Uh, no, I, I agree. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a fast read. Yeah, it's definitely a it's quick a, read. It's a quick read. Yeah. And it's really nice. And I just love the the way she sort of wrote it. Like, she wrote it with so much personality of herself. It feels yeah, you like... You gotta audio. listen to the audiobook. Like, you gotta listen to... Like, if you get a chance, like, she does the audiobook, so listening to her tell the story is very awesome. I think Presley's actually gonna listen to the audiobook and do it, yes. go through the, do it again. Um, yeah, no, I agree. It was, it, was, it was a really... It was a good fast read. And, like, super inspirational again. Like, she's yeah. a very inspirational person. Like, the way she looks at life and she lives, like, a very uh, uh, reflective life. She mm -hmm. thinks about her choices and what the impacts are, and I think that's awesome. I love that. I think... I we should also say congratulations. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she just had her baby. Uh, they, they're still in the hospital as of today, maybe even. It's just uh, yesterday or the day before. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's going to be a really good mom, I think. She's going to be an excellent mom because she sort of lives this reflective life, yeah. right? Uh, I thought it was really good. So uh, you, any particular parts of the book that you wanted to talk about specifically? Mm, not, that's not anything specific. Mm. Um, you have a few notes about I parts that you liked. Yeah, um, I did. But I just genuine, genuinely enjoyed the book and how she sort of told her story and didn't yeah. hide anything. I actually, um, the cool thing is she started by um, a blog. She started <laughs> her, by a blog called like Jared, uh, no, Jared. Um, Gozel loves, loves Jay, Jay Leno. Leno, Yeah, I think. something like that. Yeah. yeah, I think that was what, what it was. And that's yeah. sort of how she started her internet thing. Yeah, she like went to the Tonight Show every day for like two years in yeah. the audience to like watch the show and then started a blog about how to get good tickets and how to get the good seats and how to meet Jay and like how to do all this yeah. stuff. Like it's crazy. I, I have no idea. Like that's a really bizarre way to start things <laughs> off, right? And then, uh, yeah, so she started before YouTube and then kind of came into you. Like a really interesting yeah. like uh, uh, Genesis story. And that was the interesting thing that happened at that YouTube summit where we met her that uh, they were talking about nobody knows how Tom Cruise got famous but everybody knows how who did they say? Um, I don't remember who their example PewDiePie? was but yeah PewDiePie everybody knows how PewDiePie got famous and there's like a different relationship because you sort of know backstory about these people. And so we know even more about Blizzard, right? It was an electric. I'll throw out a couple of things I wrote down. Because I, I related to just so much stuff in this book because I grew up sort of Southern. And, and so there was a lot of things that kind of rung true to me. And this is in no particular order. This is just <laughs> random stuff I wrote down. Uh, when she was writing about the guy having a seizure, uh, and her mom like stabbing him with a ladle. Um, she was, she, did, I thought he put it in his mouth, not stabbing him. Well, she was trying to put it in his mouth. And I don't think he bit down on it and, and hurt his teeth. I think she actually cracked his teeth trying to put it in his mouth. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so years ago, um, we had a, a, a dog named Bear, yeah, named Pooh Bear, right? And uh, Pooh Bear had a seizure one night when we were living in Texas. And he and I were asleep, maybe napping even, but we were on the futon. And uh, he started having a seizure, and it woke me up, and it scared me. Like, I've never been more scared of something in my life, I think, than when he was having that seizure. I thought he was dying right in front of me, and it was a horrible experience. Like, it still, like, traumatizes me a little bit. And so I totally did the same thing. Like, I thought he was swallowing his tongue. Like, I saw his tongue kind of rolling back, and he was making these gurgling noises. And so I reached in and, and sort of flipped his tongue back and was holding his tongue down, and he bit all the way through my hand. 
like I still have scars on my hand where one tooth went in this side and one went in this side and they sort of met in the middle of my hand. Uh -huh. um, and so like that was a horrible experience. So, like reading the whole thing about the seizure, I totally related to that. Um, whoops, and how that could sort of impact her uh, over time. Uh, I, it, and that was my dog, right? That wasn't even yeah. a person. Um, I mean, I certainly loved him a lot. Uh, I thought the sunburn thing was hilarious. Yeah. The whole story about her friend getting a sunburn and like even her dad, who was a pharmacist, didn't really know how to deal with sunburns. Yeah. And that shows you something about like the segregated nature of the where people live. Mm -hmm. Like most of his clientele clearly were black and, and didn't have that problem and he didn't have a lot of people yeah. coming in to buy like aloe vera with lidocaine, which is my miracle cure for sunburns. Um, but so I thought that was, that was just hilarious. The whole yeah. her mom trying to deal with a sunburn she put, like, thing. Mayonnaise? She put mayonnaise and other many assorted things on the <laughs> white bread like one made, made a sandwich I, it's crazy that, that's a funny funny story um she talked a little bit about the funeral thing that she got into where she had to go and she like performed at her i guess it would be like her father-in-law's funeral she had to sing a song yes. right and then she found out there was another funeral that she was supposed to they were having a second funeral in a different city because he had stuff and so i've had like growing up in the south going through like funerals um it, they're horrible Right, and they have like what's called the viewing in the South, and so they'll have an open casket like the day before the funeral, where you'll go and like look at the dead person in the casket and like pay your last respects. And the family has to be there all day, and they've already lost somebody, and you're putting them through this horrible thing. And then there's a service at the church, and then you move over to the grave side, and you do a service at the grave. And then you leave and they bury the casket and you come back after that and do another service with just the family after it, 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 it's it's terrible right and so the last one i went to i told like my family i'm like i like i'm out i'm done like, i am not going to another funeral like this is horrible i hate this tradition this is a terrible thing i'm, I'm not going anymore i'm done and so her whole like sort of story about funerals was really interesting like getting getting stuck in those things i totally related to that um, you've never been to I a know. funeral. I was saying, yeah, because I understood the story. No, no, I'm saying you've actually never no, been I've to never one, been right? Yeah. To yeah, I don't know if you'll go to one. Because <laughs> I'm not I planning on going to one. one. And then, like, the hard part to read, like, her dad's legs. Yeah. Like, what her dad went through with that, just because of poverty, about his shoes not fitting and doing nerve damage and causing, like, it's unbelievable. And, like, when you listen to her in the book and you listen to her tell the story, it, it's like a... a so matter of fact, the way she's telling it, but it's this horrific thing. Like it's terrible to imagine what what he went through and what happened. But she kind of throws it out there in a very matter of fact way. Yeah. Um, and so that part was kind of hard to read. Like that stuff's happening in the United States, mm -hmm. right? There are people that are suffering that way in the United States. Like that's not something you think of happening very often. And that was horrible, right? And that part was hard to read. Like it's yeah. not a light and frothy read, you know, uh, from from that perspective. What did you think about all of that stuff? What was your take as you were reading through that? I don't know. It's kind of like. This is really horrible. I want to get through with this part and go back to the funny stuff, please. Right. But it kept getting worse and worse, yeah. right? Because it was kind of almost like funny when she was talking about like him, like you have to buy up one pair of shoes and you buy them big so you can grow into them and you wear them for a long time. And like that was kind of, yeah, okay, cool. I said, yeah, that's funny. I know what you're talking about there. But then later finding out that he did permanent damage mm -hmm. to his nerves and his feet because of wearing those shoes for so long and stuff, you're like, oh my God, yeah. I can't. Believe that happened. Yeah. But it was re again, really good. A excellent story. Uh, the guy that she dated that was lying about like designing the McDonald's drive-through <laughs> truck. He was an architect, and he said he designed the way that you order at one station and then drive up to the window with a covered canopy to keep rain that. from getting on your face. And then he was a truck driver, and then he kept trying to say, "No, I do both. I just like driving truck." It, it it was really funny, right? It was just funny. Um, but it also reminded me of advice to you is it's really hard to keep track of lies. And like if you lie to people and do different things with different people and tell this person this story and this person this story, you're gonna lose track of all of it. And so you might as well just tell the truth. Yeah. It's easier to keep track of. Like, and I can't keep track of stuff very well at all. So I'm not a good liar because I forget that I told people <laughs> stuff. The only, <laughs> one thing I used to do with a friend of mine is, uh, Whenever we would go get a haircut, mm -hmm. um, and like we didn't care, it's like now I'd go to the same person and get my haircut all the yeah. time. Like I just went, right? But uh, we'd go to different places every time, and whenever we would go, we would just totally make up this character that we were going to be. Because you have to talk to the person cutting your hair, and I never really loved that part of it. And so I didn't really want to talk about what I was doing in my life and stuff, and so I would just totally make up this new person that I was, and like a job that I had, and something that I did, and how I grew up, and like all of these things. And then I would talk to the person cutting my hair, mm -hmm 
about this person that I had invented. So you basically like writ, wrote an entire novel. I did. Like it was, yeah, it was like research for writing novels. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that actually. But like, if you're lying to your friends and stuff, you're not gonna be able to keep up with that stuff, right? <laughs> but you go to the same person to get your haircut, so you're, yeah. you're not gonna get to do that. Maybe we'll let you go get your haircut somewhere. Although Brittany would probably be really mad at us. Yes. <laughs> I know that once I started going to somebody regularly, when I would sort of break down and just pull over and go into like a supercuts or something, when I would go see the person that was cutting my hair, they would be very angry with me because you're not supposed. Like, apparently, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, she talked a lot about like uh, you know drive, like how to be successful, what it was that made her successful, and like how to go after your dreams and how to be confident, and how to pursue those things. And she is all of those things, yes. uh, and more definitely. Uh, the one thing she didn't mention is that it also helps if you're a good person. Mm -hmm. And Glazelle really seems to be like yes. a remarkably good person, mm -hmm. right? Just a good human being. There and are just so, some people that you'll meet that are just they're generally good people. And yeah. Everything and there's not really anything to be mad about them. There's just they're generally good people yeah. and they don't seem to have any negative traits. It's well, weird. even when they do something that you disagree with or something like they're coming from a good place, right? People yeah. make mistakes all the time, but if they're a good person and they're coming from a good place and they're giving out good energy and they're doing those, <laughs> that is that, that is definitely Glazelle. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, well, what I was that like you know she uh, she had a surrogate, so they just had their baby through a surrogate, right? Mm -hmm. And like you know, mom and I had a lot of trouble having you. Like we tried for a really long time and went to doctors and sort of did all kinds of things. And we were actually pretty close to, we were having conversations about adoption, like sort of saying, hey, this, is really, this isn't going to work. Like we're not meant to do this when she actually ended up getting pregnant with you because of some of the th treatments that we were doing and stuff, right? So we can very much relate to those kinds of things. And so it's really amazing and, and I'm super happy personally. I obviously like, can't relate to this. Yeah, no, yeah, this is not something, yeah, 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 you were involved because it was you that we were, were trying to build and bring into the world, right? But I'm, I'm so, so happy for yes, myself to, to, to be a mom. I think it's going to be really awesome. And I think I, I would really like her husband, too, the way she describes it, too. Um, and then the only, the only other thing I wrote down was, was just a funny little side story. She talked about, like, knowing how much trouble you were in when uh, your grandmother, like, pulls out the stick that's holding up the window in the house because you're about to get a whipping with it and stuff, and I could relate to that. Like, there's, again, we definitely had houses in Tennessee and in the, in the back there that, that that's in the, in the summer, and when it was hot, you would prop up the window with a stick because it would just keep falling down, and if somebody went after that stick, somebody was in trouble. I just thought that, like, so much of it was, like, kind of relatable. I could totally see a bunch of things about what was going on there. Yeah, that one, you don't, yeah, you definitely don't know that, that kind of life, and you haven't spent enough time in Tennessee, uh, to, to see some of those things because that's still going on back there probably right but um some things that i thought were interesting that yep. were in your notes yep. is um she i had no idea this happened but at the uh streamies awards like maybe last year oh yeah, yeah she broke her legs while sliding down a fire pole. one of them yeah like one an ankle them. or a yeah. leg or something yeah, yeah yeah and i had no idea that happened Didn't either. i'm gonna take a watch the video i'm sure there's a video of that somewhere yeah. i don't know if i want to see it or not but <laughs> yeah. uh yeah that's yeah so, i had no idea that happened that was weird. i think that's how the book even starts right yeah, that's the book starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like all of these things led up to that. But then she also talked about this is again perspective and, and like attitude. And she talked about how at the time that seemed like a horrible thing because she was lined up to do some work that she couldn't now do because she broke her leg. It was a but, game show yeah, that right. you run in. Like a reality sure game show kind is. of thing. Yeah, right, right. And that she was gonna, gonna be on, and she was slated to be on with her best friend. Um, so you do it in pairs. Um, but <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, but that also opened a bunch of doors for her. Like if you have the right attitude and you keep moving forward and you just accept it and you do your thing. That and she got to do a bunch of other really cool it, things it ended up being, yeah, able to do That's that. exactly right. So instead of just being down and depressed and upset and mad that she'd lost this opportunity mm -hmm. and. And, and just fuming for a year. She or, went and did other she things. She went and did other things, and she didn't let it stop her. Because, too, she had her dad as an example <laughs> of not letting. Like, just the, the mental image of her dad, like, getting in the ladder out yeah. to go fix a crooked shelf or something is just, I, I, I don't know, it's very funny to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's a good one. What else? Um, yeah, I just, sorry, I need to think. Um, yeah. A little bit. She did, um, I also had no idea she did just normal comedy. Like yeah, like stand-up. She yeah. went to clubs and did stand-up comedy. And what was and her uh, unique characteristic in her stand-up? Um, she tried to be very family-friendly. She was clean. Right. No one else was there. No one else there was doing all this family-friendly clean stuff. So she felt kind of weird. I guess she, I, she kind of said that she felt kind of weird doing it because everyone else was very harsh with the comedy. But then she would come out and she would do like very clean comedy. Do I look as silly as you look? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what I look like. I'm just watching you talk, and I'm like, I can't even pay attention to what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> she talked about having, like, members of her church come out. 
<laughs> to her comedy shows, and then the other comedians would like be working blue and doing like bad material and stuff, and she felt bad that she had yeah. drugged those people out. But she also had really good, like, I don't know, it's such a good book. Like, I, I love Glozelle now. Yeah. Like, I, I liked her before and was a fan of hers, but I just love her as a person now. Like, I can't get over it. Um, but she, she talked about, like, sometimes you have toxic friendships. And it's not that person's fault. Like, she wasn't, like, angry at people that she had to sort of distance herself from a little bit, right? And sometimes she, she just said it was my fault. Like, they became my project, and I was working on them instead of working on me, and I needed to be working on me. And, like, making those decisions about getting toxic people away from you or getting people that make you toxic in some way away from you and stuff like that. It's just so brilliant and, and, like, insightful. And, like, people don't think about their lives in that way enough. I think you're always going to have to be thinking about your life in that way. What is the impact of this friendship that I have, and what is the what is this? Like, yeah, I thought that was that was really, and that sort of came out of some of the comedy club stuff too. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I just thought her comedy club stuff was really cool. That she I did too. Tried to, I'd love to see her stand up. Yeah, she said that like she had certain people that would just come in for her comedy yeah. hour and then leave. Yeah. yeah, right. She would bring in like an audience to the club that didn't normally, and that was kind of her big thing. Like, mm -hmm. don't. It's, it's about, you know, like everyone says, it's kind of about being yourself, right? <laughs> and being finding your niche, being being a little different in some way. And that doesn't necessarily mean crazy. Like, sometimes it means the opposite of that and being more normal, mm -hmm. like her doing clean stand-up. Or what was her other example for her someone who, who who made themselves different by being more normal and low-key? Who did that? You remember? No. It was, uh, it was a singing thing. A singing thing? Mm -hmm. A singer. Um... I can't think of... Oh, yeah, um, it was Adele, wasn't it? Adele, yeah, it was Adele. So she was talking about how Adele came out at the same time when, like, Katy Perry and Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and whoever, uh, people I don't know, were... I, I actually, I'm proud of myself for naming three people. But the... Uh, they, they, they were coming out and they were being crazy and they had crazy outfits and huge stage shows and things like that. And so Adele just walked on. The you don't want to over over try and outdo them in what they do. And yeah. Adele came out and it was really scaled back and it was just her and singing and so on. And, and like that differentiated her. That made her unique, even though she wasn't like crazy side of unique. Right? Yeah. So I thought that was really good advice too. Yeah, right? it's cool. Like, be yourself and your yeah. are, that be, sounds really cheesy. Be but... unique, but that doesn't necessarily mean being crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. Cool. Loved it. Loved it. Okay, anything else mm, not that, that you've got to think of? Uh, do you I don't know. I, that's most of my stuff. And we've been talking for a long time, so yeah. we should probably wrap up. But it, it's a really good yes. book. Yes. Right? It's a really... And the book gets you some pictures. You can see it's, it's always cute to look at people's, like, kids' pictures, which I think is awesome. Yeah. The audio book, I can't recommend enough, like, listening to her. I love... Yeah. Like, sometimes when the author does the book, it's really bad because they're a really great writer, but their voice isn't awesome and their intonation and stuff. But, like, this really was... Well. Yeah, this was perfect. Yeah, Felicia Day did a really great one, too, uh, on her autobiography. Um, but, yeah, if you can get the audio book from, from Audible and, and check that out, I would I would highly recommend that. It's it's really fun to listen to her tell this story. And, and I I think it's it is it's not what I think it's not what you think it is maybe it is really inspirational like especially if you're a YouTube creator or you're doing something like that like if you're doing something creative in your life it makes you go shoot videos and, and work on your things it's a, it's a very she's a very inspirational person yeah yeah mm -hmm. awesome if you haven't taken the time to subscribe yet then please press the subscribe button uh, yes here I think um it would well, we're gonna check and see if that's really where it is yeah. and um, it would really help us out and help us produce more and better content. Yeah, please. We're actually having a little subscriber drive right now. Yes. Right? Yeah, we're trying in August to break through like a plateau we're on right now. Mm -hmm. So we want to get to 19,000 subscribers mm -hmm. uh, in the month of August. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please hit that button down there. It would help us out a ton. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, guys.